In the previous video, I mentioned the thrust towards the end, and I'd like to expand on that a bit. So, I'll rewrite the thrust equation. Thrust is equal to a force, which is just the mass flow rate of a rocket multiplied by the exhaust velocity. And th there are some other terms here, but we can choose to ignore them since we're considering examples that are in free space. In free space. Now again, the mass flow rate of a rocket is just the amount of mass that is shot out the nozzle of our, of our rocket in a given amount of time. The exhaust velocity, on the, on the other hand, is the speed at which this propellant is being ejected from the nozzle. Now, I'd like to also uh, write out a second equation for exhaust velocity, which is going to come in handy. The exhaust velocity is also equal to the gravitational acceleration on Earth, g naught, which is 9.8 meters per second, multiplied by the specific impulse of a rocket, ISP. And the specific impulse of a rocket basically just tells us the efficiency of a, of a given rocket. Now we can do some examples with these two equations. These, but the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket, that is one of the most used rockets today, its first stage has a thrust, has a thrust of 6,672 kilonewtons, which is quite a bit. The specific impulse of this rocket the specific impulse of this rocket is 311 seconds and the and the gravitational acceleration due on earth is just 9.8 9.8 meters per second squared so now we have a specific impulse we have a specific impulse we have a gravitational constant so we can find our exhaust velocity. And we also have a thrust over here, so we can substitute this exhaust velocity that we've calculated into this thrust equation, so we can also get our exhaust velocity. And since we know all of our variables for the thrust equation except for the mass flow rate, we can calculate our mass flow rate as well. So let's get started. First we'll use the exhaust velocity equation to calculate our exhaust velocity. So the exhaust velocity is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared multiplied by 311 seconds, which gives us a, an exhaust velocity. Let's calculate it over here. Let's calculate it. 9.8 multiplied by 311 gives us an exhaust velocity of 3047.8. 47.8 meters per second. So now we so now we have a thrust and we have an exhaust velocity. So we can calculate our mass flow rate by using some basic algebra. So we know that the mass flow rate the mass flow rate of our of our rocket is just the thrust of shorten it to th, the thrust, divided by our exhaust velocity. And we can do that. We can say 6,672 kilonewtons. When we say kilonewtons, we have to add three zeros to the end. 6,672 thousand newtons, we can say, divided by, so this is actually 6,672,000 newtons, divided by 3047.8 meters per second. And we can calculate this. We can say that 6,672 kilonewtons divided by 3047.8 meters per second is equal to 2,189 kilograms per second. 
what was it, 0 0.12, 0 0.12 kilograms per second. And this is the mass flow rate of a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. So we can consider ourselves uh, rocket scientists. Um, a second thing that I would like to look at is the mass of our rocket. When building a rocket, you really have to take into account every single bit of mass, because it's critical. It, as If we can lower the mass, we can lower the thrust, which we'll get to in a, in a bit. But let's go through and list the mass that we have to carry. We obviously have to carry the mass of our payload, the mass of our payload, and we have to carry the mass of the structure of the rocket, which is obvious. We have to carry something that is moving, and we also have to carry the propellant that we use to generate this motion. Using these three, we can create a mass equation, an initial and a final mass equation, which can give us some light as to how we view rocketry. So the initial mass of our rocket will be the mass of our payload, the mass of our payload, plus the mass of our structure, the mass of our structure, plus the mass of our propellant, the mass of our propellant. Now, after the rocket burns, after the rocket is fully burned, after the rocket is fully burned, our initial mass changes, our initial mass becomes our final mass, and it changes. Let's look at what has changed. Our, the, the mass of our propellant is, our payload, sorry, our payload is still there, and the mass of our structure is still there. We haven't gotten rid of either one of these, but the mass of our propellant is all but used up. It's zero. It is zero, because we burned it all to create the motion. Now, we can actually use these two equations to create two new quantities, which, I, which we'll call the propellant fraction, the propellant fraction, fraction, and our inert fraction, our inert fraction. Now the propellant fraction is just the mass of our propellant, so it's just the mass of our propellant divided by our initial mass. And this should make some sense. This, this should be kind of straightforward because we're just taking the fraction of propellant from our total mass because our initial mass can be thought of our total mass, our total mass, and we're just dividing it by our total mass. On the other hand, our inert fraction is just the amount, is just everything else that was in our rocket. So our inert fraction can be thought of as the final mass of our rocket, the final mass of our rocket divided by our initial mass. And we can actually prove that the propellant fraction and the inert fraction add up to equal one. They can add up to equal one. Because if we just look at these, because if we just look at these four equations right here, these four equations, we can say that the mass of our propellant plus the final mass is equal to our initial mass. Now once we, div once we divide both sides of this by our initial mass, we're going to get 1. Our initial mass we're going to get 1. So this cancels out and we can actually separate this part of our equation, this part of our equation to say the propellant mass over our initial mass plus the final mass over our initial mass is equal to 1. And in the next video, I'd like to do some examples with this problem and 
derive the rocket equation for you.